Now, when we finally decided it was good and wonderful and a part of God's plan, when I finally discovered that my sexual orientation, like yours, was a gift from God that I could accept and celebrate and live with integrity, when I finally discovered that, I decided I better write a book about it. So I wrote Stranger the Gate and sent it out without thinking anybody would read it. And 60 Minutes was the first one to read it. <laughs> and 40 million people watched my story twice. And then it got troublesome. To be out and to say I'm gay is no problem. But to say I am gay and Christian causes fury. You can't possibly be both gay and Christian. Is the word out? Well, I have to tell you that the word is wrong. From my experience, I have never felt closer to my loving creator than I feel today and that I have felt over these past years. Never felt more moved by the spirit of truth. Never felt more excited to get up and celebrate in the morning and go to bed at night and celebrate the day knowing that God was in it. Now, this is my story. Did I warn you at the first that it might be wrong? <laughs> I'm not a guru telling you truth. I'm simply a man telling you my truth. And I'm just hoping that you will deal with my truth more lovingly than so many people do. I was speaking at the University of Michigan at Green Bay the other day, and the provost introduced me and said, I thought it was nice to have a queer speaker. We ought to have every kind at Green Bay. Look at our football team. No. Uh, but he said, then when I said you were coming, I got letters from all over saying, I'll lose my job if I let you speak. And he says, Dr. White, I'd like to give you my favorite hundred letters. And he gave me a leather-bound volume of a hundred letters, all threatening him, losing his job if he let me speak. And they were all from state legislators. How did this issue become such a divisive issue. It is so bizarre. And then I started getting the letters from people like me out there who were reading the book. And before the letters turned into emails, and now I have two people answering my emails for the number of letters I have coming in every day about people who read the book, still 10 years later. And they all, almost all, say one thing, how can you be sure that God loves you? How can you be sure? I don't believe God does. The first week my book came out, I got a letter from a lesbian who said, if you can prove to me that God loves me as a lesbian woman, I will not kill myself. But if you can't, I will kill myself. And I thought, oh, gee, I'm going off email. <laughs> <laughs> That's a threat. Who wants to open an email and get like this? Now I've had over 100,000 printed letters like that and tens of thousands of emails every year like that. And they all say the same thing. I wrote her back immediately, went into a wonderful kind of dialogue with her for three days, and then on the fourth day she didn't write me. And I thought, she's going to be OK. On Monday of that next week, their parents emailed me and said, our daughter killed herself on Thursday morning. And. She left hard copies of your letters, and she wrote on the top, and they read to me, tell Dr. White I really appreciate it, and was moved by his responses, but he came too late. What would that do to you? Let me read you just a few more. You know, people think this is an ideological issue or a philosophical issue or a psychological issue or a theological issue. This is a personal issue. Don't ever talk about this issue in terms of scripture or in terms of the AMA or the APA or in terms of history. Always think about it and talk about it in terms of the people who are affected by it. This is a deeply personal issue and lives hang in the balance. So when you come out to a fellow student and say, it's wrong to be gay, you don't know if that person is a lesbian who is struggling like that. You don't know that your words can cut her to the quick. You don't know that that little joke you throw out about being queer or a faggot or 
daikon bike or a prissy boy. You don't know if that's one of the prissy boys who's scared to death to let you know who he is or who she is and wants desperately to be seen as a human being. Don't let this issue triumph over the fact that it concerns people you love and know on your campus. Here's a, a few of the letters. I just, I wanted to get it off my back onto yours. I'm so scared and so confused. I don't know what to do or who to believe anymore. Sometimes I wish that I wasn't gay at all. Life would be much easier then. I wish that Jesus and God would have made the subject of homosexuality clearer in the Bible. Didn't God realize that people would use and abuse this subject? It's not very clear. I wish that I could just give up on God and religion, but I can't. See, it's not secular people, gay people, who are confused. It's people of faith who are confused. I say now, it's so much safer for a gay person to grow up in a secular home than in a spiritual home, because the best parents who are spiritual often are the worst parents to gay and lesbian people. In their sincerity, they kill their own kids. <laughs> 